This is SS Robin. She's a classic of the great days of these workhorses of the sea. Ships that kept our nation fed and supplied, kept it alive indeed. The very image of the British coaster with a salt caked smokestack butting through the channel in the mad March days. Now look at one of her natural heirs in the life-giving work of sea trade. Greater by far in size and more vital than ever to our prosperity and survival as a nation. Overwhelmingly impressive as they are, these great ships form just one link in a chain. A great chain of trade, of business stretching around the world from British ports, delivering 95% of the goods we use. The food we eat, the petrol that drives our cars, the gas that lights and heats our homes and powers industry. And every link of that chain, forged by our maritime industry, must hold and bear an even strain, each as strong as the other. Or the worldwide links on which our life as a nation depends will fail, and we with it. The chain starts here, with the preparation of shipping orders by a veritable regiment of professionals, shipping agents, freight forwarders, and cargo brokers, who make sure the goods that are wanted go where they're meant to go without fail. Brokers are a critical ingredient. We're the lubricant for the maritime industry. We're there to make sure the right ships come to the right ports at the right time bringing the enormous cargo which the UK requires. There are something like 5,000 brokers working out of London, and of those, 40, 50 major companies will all have offices in the major areas of the world, the shipping areas of the world, the areas where the raw materials are. Places like Australia, China, India, Hong Kong, Brazil, and Singapore. The total income generated by these brokers is something in excess of $1.5 billion annually. But this is a small percentage of what the true value of the goods coming in, which I would estimate to be something like 25 to 30 times that figure. But all parts of the chain must be made secure, which is where insurers like Lloyd's are vital. With the UK maritime sector turning over £56 billion a year, that's a lot of insurance. Global marine insurance premium is estimated to stand at 15 billion sterling. Of that, 4 billion comes from the Lloyds and London market. That's across all class of business, hull, cargo, port liabilities. That's a huge amount of money supporting the shipping industry. This is the Bristol Port Company, another vital link in the great chain and a major modern port. In just 20 years, it has all but tripled the amount of cargo it handles. Close to half a billion pounds of investment has transformed the 2,600 acre site. A kaleidoscope of cargoes comes ashore here, and not always the most obvious ones. Animal feed in vast quantities cascades through the company's storage facilities. Nigh on half a million tons every year of agricultural products are handled, on their way to the fields and farms of Britain. Bristol is one of the UK's major ports, and as a consequence we are able to handle very large, large ships. We have naturally deep water, we have a lot of land here around the port, we have very good infrastructure in terms of the road and rail network and as a consequence we're able to handle the largest ships uh, and access our uh, hinterland which basically uh, spreads from London into the Midlands and beyond. For the future we're looking to draw on the, the benefits of Bristol Port in terms of its natural deep water, its infrastructure links both in motorway and rail to develop a world scale deep sea container terminal capable of handling 14,000 TU ships which are in operation now and, and the future larger vessel which, which will be already on the drawing board. When I say to people I work in the ports industry I sometimes get a few puzzled looks and they'll mention of names of a few ports uh, that maybe they've used at one time or another. But I would say to anyone, if, if you go say stand on the uh, seafront at Dover or at Harwich looking across to Felixstowe or even at the port of Tyne looking at the activity on the river there, I think you'll be quite overwhelmed uh, by the level act of activity going on uh, and also the adaptability of these ports and the shipping industry to respond to new markets and new challenges. The very image of the great chain, the 24-7 world of the container port. With its huge cranes and its relentless pace of cargo handling, every container locked into a, a non-virtual worldwide web. 
These ports present a staggering picture of complexity and organization on which we all depend. The lifeline is literal. If Felix Stowe, for example, went out of operation, within 24 hours, the health service would start to run out of medicines. Or take Milford Haven, the safe harbor for the endless chain of liquid natural gas carriers supplying the UK. Just one of these Leviathans carries enough gas to supply 200,000 people for a year. But for the UK's major ports, the container is king. And it's a kingdom that's booming. Eight million containers currently handled in the UK each year. We expect that to go up to 16 million over the next 20, 25 years, so doubling. And being carried in bigger ships, that means that ports are going to be able to handle bigger ships and be able to move more containers through. We expect to see better linkage between IT and GPS and containers so that handling can be even more efficient than it is at the moment. Very exciting prospects. Ports will be playing their part so that this can happen. Dealing with the two things of a very welcome boom in shipping but also keeping it safe is quite a challenge. But we do that through what are these days called risk assessments. You look at what the risk of a ship hitting another ship or going aground is and then you mitigate it and you do it for a mix of methods. Uh, one is getting pilots on board most ships because they can bring them in safely. Another is making sure that we map the seabed to real accuracy within about 10 centimetres because quite often we only have less than a metre under the keel of ships coming in. And we use modern technology like vessel traffic services systems, radar, uh, something called AIS, which is a transponder system, so that we know exactly where ships here are and can keep them apart. Though British shipping has declined in size since its 20th century heyday, British flagged ships are still central links in our chain of world oceanic trade. And UK shipping contributes over a million pounds to the economy every hour of every day of every year as vital now as it ever was. This country depends on the movement of physical trade, and that physical trade is moved by ships. Therefore, it's vastly important that we maintain shipping, and preferably indigenous shipping as well, to sustain that trade to and from our country. If you think about it, uh, our energy needs for the future are going to rely to the tune of some 35% on imported liquefied natural gas. And that, frankly, can only come in by sea. So uh, we're reliant for our energy, for our household needs, on shipping across the piece. That means keeping trade routes open, both around our coasts and across the world. But if our chain is to be firmly anchored, we must build the UK's maritime future. With nearly half a million directly employed by the UK maritime industry, and the same again indirectly, training in every skill is indispensable from ship's officer to pilot, from marine surveyor to maritime lawyer, from engineer to catering supplier. All those skills and many more are needed. We've got a growing British fleet and ideally we would like to have as much of that fleet manned by British seafarers who are um, renowned internationally for their excellence and expertise. Not only that, um, British seafarers are in great demand um, in shore-based positions, um, both within ship management, within the shipping industry and the wider maritime sector. With all this in place, the great chain that keeps our country alive and prosperous will stay firm and true. An unbroken link of the maritime between a glorious past and a future filled with promise. <laughs>